Are we starting to? Okay, uh, we're going to start again. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Respect Fest 2022. Uh, we are looking forward tonight to sharing with you uh, a bunch of previews of what's going to come this week, also some educational content, some information about voting and the fan favorite club, a fan favorite, uh, excuse me, fan favorite video, um, and a bunch of different things. First, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Debbie Feinstein. I work for the state's attorney's office for John McCarthy. I am chief of the special victims division. I'm also chair of the domestic violence coordinating council and the choose respect initiative. Uh, and I'm going to introduce uh, introduce our our the other folks that you see on this screen in a moment. We are coming together tonight through the collaborative efforts of the Montgomery County Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, including Montgomery County Public Schools, the state's attorney's office, the sheriff's office, the police department, Montgomery County Council, the recreation department, the parks department, Breathe In, Speak Out, the One Love Foundation, the Commission for Women, and many other partners. We're also coming together through the generous support of the Family Justice Center Foundation, PEPCO and CAVA, delicious CAVA, to raise awareness about dating abuse, healthy relationships and consent, how to help a friend in need. And through our collective education and awareness, we can and we will reduce dating abuse and domestic violence. During tonight's session, we will have simultaneous ASL interpretation and Spanish interpretation. If we could go to the next slide, please. And I'm going to ask Yolanda to please explain how the Spanish interpretation works. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, para hablar, buenas tardes a todo el mundo. Entonces, para poder utilizar la interpretación en español, primero tienen que hallar el símbolo de interpretación. Si están utilizando una computadora, estará ubicado en la barrita oscura que está al final del todo y que tiene como la forma de una bola del mundo. Si están ustedes utilizando un iPad, entonces habrá tres puntitos en línea que generalmente están en la esquina superior derecha. Busquen tres puntitos. Y si están conectándose por vía teléfono, pueden usar los tres puntitos en línea que normalmente están próximos a la esquina inferior derecha. Entonces presionan en uno de esos lugares los puntitos o la bola del mundo y se desplegará una lista. Y de esa lista deben escoger Spanish para poder escuchar la interpretación en el canal de español. Además de la interpretación en español, en el fondo también podrá escuchar el audio original en inglés. Si esto le distrae o le causa confusión, lo podrá silenciar del siguiente modo. Haga clic otra vez sobre el símbolo de interpretación, interpretation, saldrá en inglés, eh, y en la lista que le salga, haga clic sobre mute original audio, o mute original audio, puesto ahí. Entonces, um, eh, con eso podrán conectarse y escuchar la, la interpretación en español. Thank you so much, Alanda, for that explanation. Yes. Um, and hopefully that will be helpful to everyone. And for those that need ASL interpretation, you can see it uh, on the slide and that will be continuous throughout tonight's program. We hope that you're going to find Respect Fest to be both enlightening and empowering, and that you have some fun too during the course of this week's activity and activities and next Sunday at our in-person outdoor event. During this session, you can ask questions through the Q&A window, and we will try to respond to them during the session. I noticed that a number of the questions already relate to SSL hours, um, and, uh, and we are going to be answering those questions. We will not be responding to the chat. I want to offer a special thank you to our Respect Best Planning Committee, our incredible Student Advisory Committee, um, which includes Carissa Zhang, who is on uh, the call this evening uh, as one of our uh, speakers. I want to introduce everyone on the screen tonight. Uh, first, I want to introduce Carissa Zhang, as I mentioned. She's the student member of the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, chair of the Respect Best Student Advisory Committee, and she attends Winston Churchill High School. I'd also like to introduce Jaden Burney, who is a member of the Respect Fest Student Advisory Committee and attends Richard Montgomery High School. Smith Avario, the Program Manager for the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council and the Festival Coordinator. Welcome to everyone. We are very fortunate to have the support of so many public officials and representatives from our county and state. We thank them for attending this year's event and for their support throughout the year. We welcome Chief Marcus Jones from the Montgomery County Police Department, 
Chief Daryl McSwain from the Maryland National Capital Park Police, uh, the Montgomery County Division. My boss, John McCarthy, the state's attorney for Montgomery County. Sydney Katz from the Montgomery County Council. Chief Deputy Max Wee from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Carmen Fasciolo, Assistant Chief in the Montgomery County Police Department and the Community Resources Bureau. Captain Amy Dom from the Special Victims Division, Montgomery County Police Department. Lynn Harris from the Montgomery County Board of Education. Rochelle Rubin from the Montgomery County Public Schools, Tom Mannion, the director of the Family Justice Center, and Risa, Risa Levy, the uh, executive director of the Family Justice Center Foundation. I'm gonna now turn it over to Carissa and Jaden uh, to take you through a series of polling questions. Thanks so much, Carissa and Jaden. Okay, so discussing day violence needs to be normalized because of its prevalence. Um, so true or false, one in three teens experience abuse by someone that they're dating or going out with. So let's take a moment to vote. True or false, one in three teens experience abuse by someone that they are dating or going out with. Okay, looks like we've got some answers. Carissa, what's the answer? So the answer is true. Um, so next poll. Uh, true, and, and let me just note one additional thing. More than half of all college students report experiencing abuse or controlling behaviors in the dating relationship while in college. So it's one in three teens experience abuse by someone that they're dating. And unfortunately it continues into college. Next poll, is Jaden gonna share that one with us? Our next one, or Chris, is that you again? Um, I think it's Jaden. Yeah, okay. so true or false, dating abuse is only physical. Let's pop up some responses to question number two. Dating abuse is only physical, true or false? We're still seeing the first poll, I think, up here. There we go. Let's start filling in your answers. Looks like most people are on the mark. Jaden, what's our answer? It is false. So dating abuse includes emotional, physical, sexual, technological, and financial abuse, as well as stalking. Uh, stalking. So I'm going to pass it over to Carissa for our next question. Um, so true or false, most teens and young adults know how to help someone that is experiencing dating abuse. So we're getting a little bit of varied answers here. About 77% say false, 24% say true. Carissa, what is our answer? So the answer is actually false. Over half of college students said they do not know how to help someone that is experiencing abuse. So next poll. So before we go there, Chris, I'm just gonna mention there has not been a study um, involving adolescents which is, or teens, which is why we're looking at college numbers, but it's pretty scary that over half don't know how to help someone. And we're gonna be talking about that exact topic during the course of this week. Next poll, Jaden. Okay. Um, true or false, most teens and young adults know how to help someone that is experiencing dating abuse. So actually, uh, Jaden, can you go to the next question? Oh, uh, my bad, my bad. You're good, okay. you're good, no worries. Pure or false, few teens and young adults know how to recognize the warning signs of dating abuse. Is that, that's the same question, okay. Um, true or false, dating violence only happens when girls are the victims and boys are abusers. Okay, so I think our last two questions were somewhat similar. Few teens and young adults know how to recognize the warning signs of dating abuse. And the answer is true. Close to 90% of college students reported they are not confident in their ability to recognize the warning signs. So the next question we're asking is dating violence only happens when girls are victims and boys are abusers. And really I should put an asterisk to that when say uh, individuals who identify as female and individuals who identify as male um, or you know, any really think about it as any particular category. Is it just female identified individuals who are, um, who are victims and just male identified individuals who are abusers? Um, and if that's, a, if that's a, um, a sort of a question that you know, presents two options, we obviously have many more options than just that. And I guess what you're seeing in the answer is 
it's absolutely false, right? It's absolutely false. Um, and why don't you share uh, the answer to that part, Jaden, if you could pick that up where, uh, what the answer is. Yeah, sure. So let me go back. Um, okay, so actually anyone could be a victim. Um, anyone could be a victim and anyone can be the abuser, no matter gender, identity, sexual orientation, age, social, economic status, religion, race, or ethnicity. So it can be anyone. Great. Um, and thank you so much for, for sharing that information. I think that's really important information um, for, uh, for everyone to know that uh, dating abuse cuts across all, um, all gender, uh, sexuality, um, ethnic, cultural, et cetera, just as, uh, as, as Jaden described. And I think that that's a significant piece because we know when we hear that one in three number, that one in three teens um, are a victim of some form of dating abuse, we know that that cuts across sort of everyone. It's not unique to some group or another group. Um, so that's why we're here today, right? We wanna change the statistics. We wanna learn the warning signs and we wanna learn how to help our friends, ourselves, our family member. So thank you so much to Chris and Jaden for leading us through those polling questions. We are now privileged uh, to have the opportunity to hear from Hannah Reed. Hannah is a survivor of teen dating violence. She graduated in 2016 from Northwest High School and from James Madison University in 2020. She has been involved with Choose Respect initiatives since high school and she's an incredible advocate for domestic violence and dating violence prevention. Now we know that this topic um, can bring up different emotions for different people. If you, you know, if you want to rejoin us in about 10 minutes, turn off your, um, turn off your sound. If this is not something that you want to hear, um, you know, please feel free to do that. If you're feeling upset at any point or need support, please reach out to the National Dating Hotline or any of the other resources um, that, uh, that, are, that are available on the screen that you see. There's the hotline number, there's a text number, and there's a chat number. So please reach out. And I'm going to welcome Hannah, who is a true survivor and a hero to speak to us this evening. Hannah. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Debbie. Um, like she said, I'm a Northwest grad back in 2016, a while ago. Um, and like she said, this can be a little bit triggering. So of course, if you need to hop off, completely understandable. And I'm going to share something I wrote in regards to my personal testimonial. Um, typically when sharing my stories, I get into the details of what happened to me. And while I will briefly go into those details this time, I want to share what I learned. When I was 15, I was in an abusive relationship. During this relationship, I had a lot to learn about myself and those around me. I learned that it's important to pay attention, pay attention to the small, seemingly insignificant details. These details could have saved me from two years of pain. Details being even little comments about my wear, how I look at different people, even who I hug in the hallways. Looking at this naively, I saw these things as just little quirks of my significant other, that this person was just protective over me. This brings me to the next thing that I learned, that there's a thin but crucial line between protectiveness and possessiveness. While some of these things may seem obvious when in a relationship like this one, sometimes it is easier to ignore these things than face the risk of losing the person you believe you're in love with. In this relationship, the small things quickly turned into big things, even within a couple days. A comment about what I wore quickly turned into my significant other calling me disgusting names and trying to convince me that I was a whore or cheating when I wore certain things. In those moments, I thought maybe this person was right, that out of respect for them, I should dress in a way that makes them feel comfortable. Then this turned into intense manipulation and physical abuse that I often believed I deserved. From this experience, I also learned what it means to love. Love is not compromising necessary boundaries in order to make someone feel comfortable. It is setting said boundaries, discussing them, and immediately drawing a line if those boundaries are crossed. Now I want to talk about the signs. I want you all to remember that often the signs of an abusive relationship can be so minuscule that you don't even notice them. Little things are what you need to look out for. It's pretty rare to see someone physically or emotionally abuse their partner in public, but it is common to see even a slight change in someone's facial expressions, mannerisms after this occurs behind closed doors. While I did experience physical abuse, the emotional abuse in my high school relationship was way more common for me. 
and a lot of times hurt way more than any of the physical abuse that occurred. My partner at the time would tell me that they loved me and that I was a slut all in the same breath. When hearing this, I started to equate insults with love. I began to fear hurting my partner by doing anything and everything that may upset them. However, I know now that setting boundaries does not hurt anyone, hurt anyone other than those who are trying to manipulate you. While it is important to look out for signs of physical abuse in those around you, bruises, cuts, scars, etc., it's equally important to look out for signs of depression, distress, or change of behaviors. It's very rare for victims to come forward after something has happened to them while they're still in the abusive relationship. And that brings me to my next point. What to do when you think a friend might be in an abusive relationship? In my case, I refused to listen to what anyone said about my partner, even with the bruises on my skin. I didn't wanna hear about how they're hurting me because in my mind, I know my partner better than anyone and they just don't understand. In my mind, those around me didn't see my partner bringing me flowers every time they hurt me. They didn't read the long paragraphs my partner sent me about how much they love me, which almost made me forget what they did to me. All of those nice gestures in my mind made up for the name calling and physical abuse. I saw every box of chocolates I was given as my partner really trying to change. When in reality, it was just another tactic to make me feel lucky to have such a loving partner. Unfortunately, this led to me losing virtually all of my close friends, either because my partner made me cut them off or because my friends got angry that I was still with this person and they couldn't bear to see me get hurt anymore. I don't blame my friends for leaving me in these moments. They didn't know any better and in their mind, they did virtually everything they could to help me. That being said, they didn't know to do the one most vital step, reach out for professional help. Whether that be a parent, administrator, or the FJC, it is crucial to, take, crucial to take that action if you suspect your friend is in an abusive relationship. I know it sounds scary to go to an adult or an administrator because it may feel like you're betraying your friend, when in reality, you could be saying, saving their life. I didn't want to hear my friends when they told me that my partner is toxic and that I wasn't safe, but maybe had an adult gotten involved, things could have been different. What I learned after a lot of time in therapy and self-reflection is that no matter how educated someone is, no matter how strong they may be, they are still human and cannot control how they may react to such a traumatic experience. My next message is for survivors. Whether you are in an abusive relationship currently or in the past, I have learned that there is hope and that holding on to hope means self-forgiveness and remembering that it is not your fault. This is something that we hear so often. It wasn't your fault. However, while this is true, it's often difficult to remember this. So my message to you is that even in those moments when you're regretting things, thinking about what you could have done to prevent what happened, it was not your fault and you are not alone. This chapter of my life changed me forever in the best way possible. I chose to take these experiences and do what I can to help survivors that went, underwent traumatic experiences like mine. While I often still have flashbacks, I am slowly but surely learning that, that no matter what my brain tries to convince me, I am a strong woman, not a victim, but a survivor. My message to you is this, be kind to yourself. In the moments when you may have the thoughts of maybe this isn't okay in my relationship, but I'll let it slide because I love my partner. Remember that you would not do that to the person you love, so it shouldn't happen to you. Love yourself as much as you love your mother, father, brother, or sister. You deserve pure love, nothing less. That means choosing respect for yourself and those around you. Be kind, always. And if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, reach out and get help. Thank you. And I thank you so, so much for those beautiful words this evening and for sharing um, you know, your truth and for sharing you know, what you experienced. Um, and I'm, you know, so privileged to know you and um, I've known you for many years now and um, have just watched you and all of your advocacy and support. And, you know, I hope everyone that's listening this evening, you know, hears Hannah's message, which is you're not alone. It's not your fault and help is available and um, you will survive and we will help you survive. And um, Hannah, you're, you're just amazing. Um, and uh, thank you again. Um, you know, coming together, educating ourselves, putting the message out there, these are critical ways to combat teen dating abuse. 
Uh, you know, we want you over the course of this week to learn what abuse looks like so that you can help yourself, that you can help a friend or a family member in need. We need your ears to hear what your friend might not be telling you and your eyes to see what might not be visible to someone else. And we want you to know how you can help and where you can go for help. So we're gonna talk tonight about what all the events are this week, because we're not gonna be able to give you all of this content this evening. You're gonna be picking it up through different events throughout the week. And we would really encourage you to participate in them. And don't worry, you're gonna hear about the SSL hours. We promise to share all the information that you need to know about that. But for now, I just wanna say thank you again to our incredible survivor, uh, Hannah Reed, and thank you so much for joining us um, this evening and uh, for participating and for being a part of the committee that planned this event, you're amazing. I wanna um, pivot for a second and talk a little bit about our public service announcement contest, um, which is part of our message, you know, to get, you know, part of our efforts to get this message out there about dating uh, violence uh, prevention. Uh, for over 10 years, the Family Justice Center Foundation has sponsored a public service announcement contest that challenges teens to create a brief video on some aspect of teen dating violence. This year we re received, as you can see on the screen, 346 videos about dating violence prevention. Our video creators included 574 students from 59 different schools, absolutely incredible. Now winners will be announced at the Respect Fest live festival on March 27th at three o'clock PM. And that's gonna be at the Wheaton Community Recreation Center off Georgia Avenue in Wheaton, Maryland. Our first place winner will win $1,000, our second place winning group, 750, third place, 500, and our two honorable mentions will each, each student on those groups will receive a $100 gift card. Now, in addition to the prizes for the top five, we will award 500 additional dollars to a fan favorite among those top five. Voting is open now. You can go to the link at the bottom of the screen you can also get to it off of our Choose Respect Montgomery website and vote for your favorite. Voting closes at the end of this week and the winner will be announced, as I mentioned, on Sunday at the festival at 3 p.m. That's when all of the winners will be announced um, and you'll be able to, uh, to, to view those videos tonight and also on Sunday. So we're gonna present for you this evening, the top five. So you're welcome to open up that link uh, to the video contest and vote as you see them this evening. We're gonna play the top five for you now. Top uh, number one, and these are no particular order, Dating Shouldn't Hurt, uh, which is from Jason Yu at Julius West Middle, Middle School. Although dating should not hurt, if it does... Nathan, we actually can't hear it, so I'm going to suggest that we go back to the beginning of it and uh, raise the audio. Yep, thank you. Our committee is made up of incredible volunteers, and we are not technological experts. So I am very grateful to Smitha for running these slides, and we will get there momentarily. It's like a heartbeat having its highs and lows. Although dating should not hurt. If it does, it could be- We still can't hear it. If you are unable to hear it, the sound is uh, working. I'd make sure that the sound on your computer is also um, set up. If it's not working, then um, we might have to move on. Dating violence occurs in many ways. One way is through technology. This could be through texting or through social media. Are people able to hear it? No. Okay. I apologize. We will try to adjust this and address this, um, but we're going to move on for now. I'm going to encourage everyone to click on that link at the bottom of the video, uh, excuse me, of the slide and, uh, and, uh, and, and go and view them. So I'm getting some information that perhaps if we turn up the sound on our computer, as Smitha described, 
uh, we might be able to get some sound. Um, is that accurate, Smita, that if individuals turn so up their- So I, I did hear from one um, participant and she was able to hear them. Okay. So it might so, be on individual computers sounds. Okay. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we go back and try to view them if we could do that. And I'm sorry if you're unable to hear it, but if you could, um, if you could turn up the sound on your own individual computer in your speaker section. So Smitha, why don't we go back and watch those five? Sure. Dating is never a straight line. It's like a heartbeat having its highs and lows. Although dating should not shrink. If it does, it could be dating violence. Dating violence occurs in many ways. One way is through technology. This could be through texting or through social media. Another way dating violence occurs is through physical abuse. This could be from hitting or punching. The third way dating violence could happen is through verbal abuse. This Oops. Sorry about that. We'll get there. Dating could happen is through verbal abuse. This could be from harsh criticism or through insulting. If you know a friend experiencing dating violence, help them, talk to them, make them feel better and comfort them because dating violence is difficult to deal with. If you are experiencing dating violence, you're not alone. In fact, one in three teens suffer from dating abuse. So, talk to a trusted adult or call the Montgomery County Family Justice Center at 240-773-0444 because dating shouldn't hurt. So that was video number one, again, in no particular order. Our next video is Not My Fault from Martin Luther King Junior Middle School, Amelia Lancaster, Olivia Gerard, Lauren Miller, and Naira Ismail. Hey, it's time to break up. Our relationship just isn't healthy anymore. It took me a long time, but I've realized that I deserve better. I deserve better than you yelling at me, making me insecure, controlling my every move, hurting me. You told me I deserved it, that I was too weak to stop it, that I was just exaggerating, that it was my fault. But now I know it's not my fault. It never was. We're done. Learn to recognize the signs of abuse. If you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, call the Montgomery County Family Justice Center at 240-773-0444. Our next video, Words Do Hurt from Shady Grove Middle School, Millie Lou. Love. It's a strong word for a strong relationship, but it can be twisted in many wrong ways. Many teens face abuse while in a relationship all around the world. In fact, 33% of adolescents have faced some form of date and abuse in America. Abuse varies in many ways, such as verbal abuse. They may say things that are hurtful yet always blame everyone but themselves. They feel doubt in the victim's mind. This is gaslighting and it can cause the victim to no longer be themselves. But you can stop this from happening. This isn't love, it's abuse. If you do see someone struggling, don't stand back, do something. Please call 240-773-0444, the Montgomery County Family Justice Center for help. The next video, it's fine from Charles E. Smith Jewish Day School, uh, Sean Levitan. Levitan, excuse me. There are two words in the English language that define my world more than any other. Two words, simple, succinct, and completely false. It's never worrying. Ask someone how their day is and they respond, it's fine, and you know exactly what they're saying. We know something doesn't want to be talked about. 
So if we're concerned about someone's day when they talk about it using the words, it's fine, shouldn't we feel the same when we're talking about relationships? It's fine when describing a relationship is code, a coping mechanism. Not just, I had a bad day, but I've had a bad relationship, a bad year, a bad several years, maybe longer. Not just, I thought maybe it would get better, but I thought they loved me. They told me they loved me, and I wanted more than anything to believe them, and I feel so stupid for that. Two words in the English language that we hear and understand every single day, but they are much, much more. Sometimes they are the only way for a person to say, I need help. And our final video, High School Simulator from Nicholas Benning and Sebastian Drain from Einstein High School. They're going to be mad at me. Who can I talk to? Hey, are you okay? You look exhausted. Yeah, just tired. <laughs> are, are you sure? I can hear your phone notifications going off. That sounds intense. They shouldn't be making you feel stressed, unwell, or uncomfortable if that's what's going on. I, I don't know what to do. Well, you should know that a lot of people care about you, and we want you to feel comfortable and safe and healthy. Thank you. Pretty incredible work from our, uh, you know, Montgomery County uh, folk is teens that either live here, go to school here, um, really just incredible. And uh, just as another promo for our public service announcement contest, if you wanna participate next year, you actually can earn SSL hours for creating your video. Um, and there's just lots of SSL opportunities, which you're gonna hear more about as we continue to talk through this evening. Um, so what else is happening this week? Uh, Smith Avaria is gonna take us through, Avaria, excuse me, will take us through the awesome events planned each day. And Carissa and Jaden will describe our other online activities, how you can earn SSL hours, and how you can qualify for our many raffle prizes. Uh, Smitha. Great. Thank you, Debbie. And we're excited to have all of you here. So as you know, today we launched um, Respect Fest. If you go to our website, which the um, link is on the bottom, tinyurl.com backslash moco Respect Fest, that has all of the information for what you need to know for this week. We are excited um, about all of our different events. So tomorrow on March 22nd at 7 p.m., we're going to be having a webinar called Let's Talk Consent. It will be a webinar going over um, sexual assault, consent, and bystander intervention. It will have a panel from the uh, Montgomery County Police Department, the state's attorney's office, and the Victim Assistance and Sexual Assault Program. This webinar is for eighth through 12th graders only. We will have ASL interpretation as well. On Wednesday, we have several events. At six o'clock, we have a webinar for parents, uh, Parents Guide to Teen Dating Violence. And we will have that same webinar at 7.30 in Spanish. That webinar will include information about teen dating violence, what the warning signs are, and how to talk to your child. And then at 6.30 p.m., one of our wonderful community partners, the One Love Foundation, is going to be doing a workshop on healthy friendships and healthy relationships for middle school students, grades six, grades six seven, and eight. On Thursday, we have a Jeopardy game for high school students. That uh, session has already been um, registered and is now full. So thank you all for your interest in that, um, in that activity. However, there are many different activities that you all can do online as well. 
and um, our student advisory committee will go and um, talk to you a little bit more about um, about some of the other things happening online. Yes. Oh, but first, but sorry, but first, Debbie is going to go over our big festival on Sunday, March 27th. So, and then uh, after I do that, we'll go back to y'all, Carissa and Jaden. So I uh, just want to spend a couple of minutes promoting um, our live in-person uh, event on March 27th. It's going to be an outdoor festival. Remember to bring your coats. The forecast is showing that it might be a little bit chilly next Sunday but it's gonna be amazing. Uh, it's at the Wheaton Community Recreation Center on Georgia Avenue at Arcola, and it's gonna be an amazing afternoon. It's gonna feature live performances from a variety of student groups, including Northwest High School, the Rec Department, the Teen Angel Project, and many more. I think we're gonna have a drum line. It's gonna be amazing and incredible. It's gonna be emceed by our student member of the board, Hannah Oluni, and we're really looking forward to that as well. There's gonna be many raffle prizes, including an AirPods, a Fitbit, amusement park tickets. There are gonna be food trucks and you can get free food um, from both of the food trucks that are there. There'll be multiple opportunities to participate in yoga and self-defense. You can receive lots of educational information by going to the resource table and by participating in the different content booths where you're gonna go through a series of activities to earn a stamp um, or a sticker uh, that you will then turn in at the end of the event to get SSL hours. And you can get up to three SSL hours for participating in the various <laughs> events and collecting the stickers. If everyone could please mute their phone, I'm not sure what just happened. Um, so just note that all events and food at this event are free. Um, you can go to our website for more information, but in terms of transportation, we do have buses coming from Seneca Valley High School the bus will arrive at Seneca Valley at 12.15 and depart at 12.30. And from Richard Montgomery, the bus will arrive at 12.30 and depart at 12.45. And both buses will leave the festival at 4 p.m. to return back to the school. There is limited parking on site, but there's satellite parking at Einstein High School, and there'll be a shuttle bus that'll be kind of coming and going throughout the festival. I would highly suggest that you park at Einstein, avoid the crowds, um, and take the shuttle bus and make your way directly to the festival. I'm going to now turn it over to Carissa and Jaden, who are going to tell you about a number of events that students can participate in any time during the week um, and how to get those coveted SSL hours. Uh, Jaden? Yes. Yeah, so in addition to what Smita and Debbie just discussed, middle and high school students can do activities on their own online all week. So we have a Wordle, quizzes, and so much more. Um, and you can find those activities on our website, which is um, linked at the bottom of our slides so that you can participate. I'm going to hand it over to Carissa now. Um, so for SSL hours, when students participate in any of the Zoom events or do the virtual activities on their own, they can earn up to five SSL hours. So this includes this Zoom and also any other virtual activities or Zoom calls you attend. So to report your SSL hours for the virtual events, go to the SSL forum linked from the website after you complete all your activities and fill it out. Reporting SSL for the in-person Choose Your Spec Festival will have a different process, as you can see on the slides where the SSL is submitted in person. If you attend a private school, please email Smita at the email address provided on the slide and on the website. Remember, only fill out the, S the Google Forms once after you complete all your virtual activities. Don't fill it out more than once. So the SSL form is due on Tuesday, March 29th at 5 p.m. Include all your activities there. So and I sorry, Jaden, really quickly. Um, there has been one change. If you attend the Let's Talk Consent webinar tomorrow for eighth through twelfth graders, that is actually now a separate SSL opportunity, and so you can get two and a half SSL hours specifically for that webinar tomorrow. So you would attend it, and then there will be an SSL hour form linked to that webinar that would have to be be completed by Wednesday. So you could potentially, if you're in eighth through 12th grade, get potentially seven and a half SSL hours for the online activities, but that Let's Talk Consent webinar is considered a separate activity from the other five SSL hours that you can earn doing the virtual events. So I'm gonna ask everyone just to take a moment and read the screen. Um, take a picture of the screen if you wanna keep the information about how to um, get your SSL hours. This is the most asked question for any events that we do. 
And I appreciate that because I know many of you are here to get your SSL hours. And I'm just glad that we can give you kind of an ounce of prevention and education along with those SSL hours. So, you know, please note as, as described here, there are different methods of getting the SSL hours for most of the online events with the exception of the consent webinar. And then the in-person event is a separate method methodology or a separate way of getting the SSL hour. So take a moment, take a picture. If you go to a private or independent school, email Smith Avaria. Avaria, I keep doing that. Um, and uh, if you have uh, if you have questions in general, there is more information on our website. And that website, you can scan the QR code at the bottom of this page. You can go to the link that's described at the bottom of the page. And we encourage you to get more information. And you can actually sign up on our webpage for continuous updates um, and you'll get, you'll get emails and other information uh, from there. So um, I'm gonna ask us to now go to the next slide and turn it back over to Smitha. So as we mentioned earlier, we, we will be giving out lots of raffle prizes during this week. If you participate in any of our activities during the week, you will be entered to win either an Amazon or Target gift cards. Um, and on March 27th, you can come to the raffle table and enter to win great prizes. Awesome. We hope that everyone's going to join us. So keep in mind that there's going to be raffle prizes at the events during the week and by coming to that's at the webinars. And then by coming to the event on Sunday, there's even more. So just another incentive to have you come and learn with us. Uh, back to you, Smitha, for the next uh, slide. Great, thank you, Debbie. And as always, all of this information that we are talking about over the week is information that can be difficult to hear. And we want to make sure that you all know that there are resources available, free resources available if you need help at any point during this week and beyond. The Montgomery County Family Justice Center is available for anyone um, 16 and older. If you are under the age of 16, we do need parental consent. The Montgomery County Victim Assistance and Sexual Assault Crisis Line is available 24 hours a day, and they can uh, assist anyone 12 years or older. Jakeda also has a teen dating violence program, and they can assist any one age is 16 and older. And then the National Dating Violence Hotline is available at any time. There's a 24 hour hotline. You can text with them to 22522 and you can chat online with them as well. And they have wonderful resources. If you are worried about a friend and you just want to talk to somebody about how to handle that situation, how to approach your friend, they are a wonderful resource. So we want to make sure that you all know these resources. Again, take a picture of this. It's also on our, the website. Um, the link is below. And um, we will also be posting information on our social media throughout the week. And, um, and our resources are also linked um, through our social media channels as well. To me that there was a question that I think we could probably clarify with respect to SSL hours. Um, one of the questions was how many activities do you need to participate in during the week to get all five SSL hours? This is not including the consent webinar, but to get the other five SSL hours. Can you explain that? Sure, so there are many, many different ways. There are currently eight activities that people can do online. And then there are the events in the evening you only have to do a total of five. So that could be five uh, online activities. It could be three online activities and two webinars, whatever you would like it to be. And then there's a link to the SSL hour form on the website. You would click that. And we, again, we stress to only do that once you've completed all of your activities because you can only fill out that SSL hour form once. And on the SSL hour form, you then pick which ones you've completed to then write your reflection statement. So again, it can be a combination of both the asynchronous activities you do on your own and also a combination of the online Zoom webinars as well. Of course, the webinar tomorrow evening is a separate two and a half hour um, opportunity. 
So there's a couple of questions in the um, Q&A that I want to address as well. One of the questions was, can you get SSL hours if you go to a school that is not in Montgomery County? Um, the answer is, I don't know. We will be happy to sign your forms. You can bring your forms from your county or from your private or independent school. We can sign those at the event, you know, assuming that you've uh, checked the boxes and gotten the stickers and that sort of thing. Um, but our agreement is with um, is with Montgomery County Schools, uh, not uh, non-Montgomery County Schools. So I just wanted to uh, to make that uh, reference as well. Um, we also have a question of what does Sorry, Decatur Debbie. Sorry, Debbie, really quickly, just um, so if you do not attend a school, uh, an, a Montgomery County public school, or you attend a school outside of the county or a private school, my email address is on this slide, smitha.varia at montgomerycountymd.gov. You would just send your SSL hour form to me, and I would be happy to sign it, and then it's up to your school to, um, to accept it or not. And there's some additional questions about SSLs for the webinar. Yes, you get SSL hours for the webinar. There's check boxes for all of these different events. The only distinction we were making is that the uh, Let's Talk Consent webinar tomorrow night has its own two and a half web, uh, SSL hours that are available. But say that you came tonight, you go to, um, and then you do four other online activities in the, in the virtual activity section, five SSL hours. Um, and if you go to a webinar tonight and you go to a webinar on Wednesday night, um, then you will have the opportunity to do three more virtual activities, five SSL hours. Um, you're going to end up, you know, really uh, getting the bulk of your SSL hour time, um, you know, through the virtual activities, the asynchronous activities, if you will. Um, so please check them out because there's a lot of great things to learn. There were a number of questions in the Q&A about you know, how do, I, uh, how do I know what an abusive relationship looks like? How do I help a friend? You know, what do I do, um, you know, under these circumstances? All of that information is gonna be available for our virtual activities. We also have a lot of information available on the Family Justice Center website where you can, you know, get more information, do a deeper dive um, and, and learn about this information, um, you know, uh, by, by reading the materials there. Um, so I'm just double checking. One other question was, what does JACADA stand for? It stands for the Jewish Coalition Against Domestic Abuse. They're an organization that does education, prevention, and support for individuals that are experiencing power-based violence. Um, and that includes uh, intimate partner and dating violence. I'm just scrolling through. Uh, one of the questions is, is this recording available for us to revisit? The recording will be posted on our website, but you cannot uh, earn SSL hours for watching it separately, but you can get uh, content that way. Am I correct about that, Sunitha? No, if they, if they watch the webinar and and fill out the form, then then if somebody oh. was unable to make the time tonight and you wanna send it to a friend, that's that's also fine. Oh, great, okay, perfect. Spread the word, spread the word, get it out, get it out there, send out the information and, uh, and you'll be able to uh, get those SSL hours and get them for your friends too. Um, so I want to just conclude this evening with a couple of reminders and thank yous. I want to say thank you again to all of our sponsors um, who have supported this event and all of the, you know, free food and everything else. You can see a list of our primary sponsors um, on the slide in front of you. As is mentioned here, the Choose Respect Initiative is part of the Montgomery County Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, which is uh, a council that has representatives from lots of different agencies um, and uh, nonprofits and community members. The council is an adult council, but does have one student member. And that student member this year is Carissa, who is on our screen this evening. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, that is something that you can apply for if you're interested. If you're interested in being on the student advisory council or committee next year, you can apply for that as well and get even more SSL hours by participating on the student advisory committee. Lots of opportunities to, um, you know, give you credit for your incredible public service. Um, I also want to remind everyone to vote for the fan favorite um, and, uh, and check out those videos and go to the form and fill out your, your top choices, sign up for events on the website, and please join us on March 27th, uh, 2022, this Sunday at the Wheaton Community Recreation Center and the adjacent Wheaton Local Park um, for great activities. Um, if it does rain, we will be holding the, uh, the event inside uh, the gym 
at the community center. So it's rain or shine, come join us on the 27th, get your free food, get your raffles, enjoy the incredible performances and learn. Uh, really, that's what this week is all about. You know, we have these really fun activities, um, but you know, at the end of the day, this is, a, this is a serious topic, but we're hoping to engage you in a way that you can, um, you know, that you can enjoy what you're learning, if you will. Um, and maybe that enjoyment will come because you're eating Kona ice while you're, uh, while you're going to the content booths um, and, and learning a little bit about how to help a friend or what are the signs of, of a dating uh, relationship that is not okay and that is not healthy. So please join us. We're gonna keep the Q&A open for a few more minutes um, if you have any additional questions. But at this point, we're gonna conclude um, the talking portion of the program. I wanna say thank you to our ASL interpreters. Thank you to our um, Spanish language interpreter. Thank you to Jaden and Carissa for helping us, uh, helping us uh, facilitate this discussion this evening. And thanks as always to Smitha for all of her work and dedication in putting this program together. And lastly, a huge thank you again to Hannah Reed for so bravely sharing her story this evening. Thank you to all of you for attending and for engaging in this effort because really the point of all of this is to bring this issue out of the darkness into the light so that people know that if you are suffering in a domestic or dating abuse relationship, you are not alone. Um, and you don't have to be afraid or ashamed to come forward. There are resources available. There are people that want to help you. Um, and we need to make it such that people feel like they can come forward um, and that we have a community that understands the dynamics of dating abuse um, and that our community knows that there are resources out there and that people that are gonna just open their arms and their hearts and their minds and support you um, as you navigate whatever it is that you're going through, whatever a friend might be going through or a family member. So thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you throughout the week. And again, as I mentioned, the Q&A will stay open for another five minutes. Thank you so much and have a good evening, everyone.